everybody. Good to see everybody out this morning. Amen. Let's do this, Mount Bell. Let's make our guests and visitors welcome. We're so glad you're so glad you're with us this morning. Amen. So glad those that are watching, live stream, Facebook, and all that. Uh, if you can, let's stand for the reading of God's word. Sister Tina's coming. She's got. She's going to read, and then she's got a couple of testimonies she wants to share what the Lord's been doing. So uh, let's. Uh, and don't forget, you need to make an announcement. Or you want me to? Okay, I'll do it. Uh, come on, Sister Tina. Good morning, everybody. Did anybody come here to praise the Lord this morning? Good. I'm going to help you here just in a minute. Deuteronomy 32 and 4. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. I want to tell you what our God did. I'd been praying for an aunt that had a bowel blockage. And uh, I stood in for her when Don spoke the other night. Got a text the next day, the bowel blockage is gone. And now my most favorite testimony. My mom was diagnosed with lymphoma last October. They said without treatment, she wouldn't, wouldn't live but six months. She had chemo and radiation. She went to the doctor about two days ago. No sign of cancer. Thank you. If that's not God, I don't know what, what God is. Somebody give the Lord a good praise this morning. Amen. He's still in the healing business. Come on. Amen. If you'll stay standing just for a few moments, we've got a few announcements and we're going to uh, get get into underway here. Uh, don't forget, Sister Sharon is collecting money for Thanksgiving baskets to give to people. She's got a little jar. She's a little lady waving the jar down there. So if you can, please uh, give to that. How many did you do last year? 20? She did 25 and was able to do some for Christmas. So if you can help donate, that's a great cause. Amen. Uh, don't forget that. How many knows what's happening tonight? Family fun night. Amen. Remember, at 5 o'clock, all fired up, we're having walking tacos. 4 o'clock. Buffy, is it 4 or 5? Oh, we're doing, <laughs> we're doing it at 4 now. All right, we're going to do it at 4. So you're having walking tacos, you're having acoustic worship, you're having fire games, Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. I hope the Holy Ghost shows up. Amen. So just come out, invite some friends and family. Hey, just a real quick shout out to all who helped in the, in the Harvest Celebration or Community Fest last night. If I'm looking for Audrey, we had roughly 12, how many? We had 1,217 people there last night. Can we give the Lord a good praise? Amen. Amen. Thank you all for working and helping and handing out candy and, and all that good stuff. I don't know how many trips I made extra to Walmart getting hot dogs and buns and everything, me and a few other guys, but uh, it was a great turnout. Amen. Hey, it's about impacting our community. Amen. It's about reaching out. So that's the key. So don't forget tonight, it's the same in the same family if you will, we can come and gather and worship and have a good time. So invite somebody. The, it's not supposed to be raining tonight. So bring your, you got to bring a chair, right? Chair and a blanket and all that good stuff. So it's at four o'clock. So please be here. Uh, invite somebody. I'm trying to make sure I'm not missing anything. Da, 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 da. Okay, I think we're good. Amen. Amen. Mount Vell, let's do it one more time. Let's make our guests and visitors welcome. We're so glad you're with us today. So glad you come to worship the Lord. If you are a visitor here this morning, hopefully our connection team has given you a connection card. Please fill that out for us. So you can QR it, you can text it, or you can drop it in the box back there. We'd love to connect with you. And if you're here for your first time and you have children, we have our three to five year old class going on. We have children's church ages six to 11 going on. Our security and our, and our connection team will be gladly to walk you over to the building and check you in over there. So. 
you'd like to do that. The people who have the lanyards on is the fit team or the connection team, and they'll help you. Amen. Sheriff, how many you got this morning? 25? 35. Sheriff's got 35, and he needs a little help. Amen. So help him. He'd like to have 135 if he could this morning. So anyway, hey, look at your neighbor this morning. Say, neighbor, so glad you're here today. I believe the Lord's about to do something. Amen. Amen. So let's do this. Let's pray. Let's invite the Lord into the house. And let's worship the Lord with everything we got. How many know that the Bible says to love the Lord thy God with all thy mind, heart, body, and soul? We ought to worship him with it. Amen. So let's get ready. Father, we come to you this morning, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your mercy and your grace, God. We thank you, God, for the men and women who come faithfully to worship your name, Father God. We thank you for the visitors that are here today, Father Lord. We thank you for everything you're doing. We thank you for last night and everything that's that transpired last night. And we're, we're thanking you ahead of time for tonight, Father God. We're expecting you to show up in the midst of your people, God. And Lord, we're asking you right now to inhabit the praises of your people this morning, God. Anoint the singers and musicians as they lead us into worship, God. Anoint our pastors. He brings forth the word today, God. Let the word go forth and do its work, God. Save, sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost. Heal, deliver, strengthen, encourage, and set free in this house today, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask it all right now by the power, by the authority, and by the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody shout, Amen.
Praise the Lord. Somebody give the Lord a good hand clap of praise in the house. Oh, come on. He's been better to you than that. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Sing praises unto his name. Glory to God. Let's give all our guests and visitors a good warm welcome. Good to see you here today. You might be seated just for a second. If I could, amen, I'd like to uh, change the order of service just for a minute moment, amen. Uh, this time comes uh, to all pastors somewhere in the ministry that God begins to move people and you have to, uh, you want to uh, bless them, amen, and send them forth and uh, and uh, the time has came that uh, Brother Jesse and Sister Melissa are making a move for the Lord. I think we ought to give God a good praise for that. Amen. But I'm asking them to come up here at the front. I dressed that all in red. And turn around and face these people right here. And I'm going to ask for the council to come, and we're going to pray over them and ask the Lord to bless them. Amen. I think this is biblically correct. I mean, you agree with me. Amen. Hey, listen, if you're doing something in church, you don't just run off. Amen. When you get done, you stand up. You make the acknowledgments that God's making a move in your life, and you let the leadership bless you and send you forth. That's the right way to do it, right? Amen. Any more Sunday school teachers, councils, anybody? Hey, uh, don't be afraid of them. Come over here and get you some oil. Grease them up. Amen. <laughs> but we do appreciate them. Amen. And, and uh, the hard work. I think uh, Melissa's handing over some stuff. And I think some didn't really realize what a big hand she had, you know, in all this. And Brother Jesse's pastored before. Amen. And. Who knows, he, he may be going out, he may not know it yet, but he may be going out to pastor somewhere, amen. We're not putting him out to pastor, he may be going out to pastor. <laughs> Isn't that terrible, it's a pun on the words, right? But we do love them, amen, and we appreciate all. How many just know that anytime you call uh, about a prayer request, Sister Melissa was always there to put it out for you, amen. Not only to do that, but to pray, amen. And we just appreciate all the help they've done and pushed us forward together as a body of believers. Amen. And we want to bless them today. Amen. In the name of the Lord. We want to speak a blessing over them. You know something? You can speak blessing or curse. Amen. You are the only thing in this earth that's created in the image of God that he gave the ability to speak. Amen. When he created, he created with his voice. Hey, and you can read in the you can read in the Old Testament they pronounce blessings over their children. That's why you don't need to never tell your kid how stupid it is or never be anything or never amount. You speak life and blessings and strength. The power of life and death is in the tongue. And today I want to pronounce a blessing over them. Amen. Will you stand with me today? And I want you to stretch your hands this way toward them, and we want the Lord to bless them and all their endeavors for the cause of Christ. Amen. Anoint them with oil. Father, we bless them in the name of Jesus. So thankful for your servants, God, that have come this way and blessed us, God, with their time and their talent and their abilities. And God, as I lay my hands on them, God, we send them forth. And we ask you, God, that you would move mightily, God, in their lives. God, bless everything they put their hands to, Lord, whether it be music, whether it be ministry, whether it be pulpit ministry, whether it be teaching. God, there's so many abilities and so many talents that are in this couple. And I'm asking today, God, that you, Lord, would move in their lives. Open the doors you want them to walk into. Close the doors you don't want them in. And God, give them the wisdom to know the difference. And God, Lord, I'm asking you for the church they're going to, God, that you would move in that church, God. Open doors in that church for them, God. And let everybody that comes in contact with them be blessed, God. Keep your hand upon them all the days of their life. Move and minister, God. And as we come, Lord, as we are approaching, God, the end of this age and the coming of the Lord, I pray, God, give them many souls, Lord, for their labors. Move in their lives. Show yourself more real. Lord, let the rest of their life be the rest of their life and the best of their life, God. I pray, God, move and minister. Touch, help, minister to their needs, God, as they go forth. Bless them, Lord, as they come and bless them as they go. And we give you praise and honor and glory. And the church said, 
Amen. Now, can I do this? I'm taking the liberty right here real quick. But uh, can I do this? Uh, while they play something, If and, and, and I know and we're in the COVID thing, but I think it's proper. Amen. Because we love them. Don't we love them? Amen. I'm on, well, I want them to play something. And if you don't feel comfortable and shaking hands, just give them a little fist bump, right? Just bump fists, all right? I don't know anybody that's got anything today, but you never do know. But if you would, make your way around and, and let them know that we appreciate what they've done. Let's give them a good hand for all they've done to help us. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Can we give them a good hand tonight or this morning? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you'll stand with me, we're going to receive our tithes and offering. Amen. Buffy's going to try to sing before we take up our tithes and offering. <laughs> Hey, can I say something? I, how, many, how many heard me sing Sunday night? I got, I got one complaint, too. Jerry's got a complaint. Nobody offered me a contract. And then Buffy comes up to me later and says, I developed my own key. <laughs> so made, made up my own key. <laughs> so, oh, praise the Lord. This is all fun. But, uh, so, uh, but if you missed it, uh, you just missed it. So... <laughs> Probably not going to happen again, but anyway. Uh, so let's get our tithes and offering ready, amen. The Bible begins to teach us, and we, we talk about it a lot, about giving. I read something the other day, I really never thought about it this way, but talk the difference between a slave and a servant. If money's taken from a slave, he feels like he's robbed. Or if he gives, he feels like he's robbed. But if a servant gives then he feels like he's been loved. I thought how true that is. If we learn to give as a servant of Christ and not like it's a necessity or it's begrudgingly, then there's a greater purpose in giving. It's a love thing, if you will. We talk about it a lot of times. It's a heart issue. When you give, it comes from the heart. Amen. It should come from the heart because if not, then you're giving out of necessity. You're giving out of want. You're giving a way to make prosperity, if you will. But if you'll begin to give as a child of God, let, let me ask you this. How many parents and grandparents, it's easy for you to give to the little ones? You ask mine from 15, 18, 19 on down to the ones. If I got it, I give it. It's just the way it is. So in turn, it's because we love them and we care about them. And in turn, if we love God, then it's easier for us to give. It's not out of begrudgingly. Say, I love you, Lord. That's what you're saying sometimes. You say, well, it's money. It's not money necessarily. It's the heart. He's asking you, and it's, it's a tangible way of showing your love in a way. So if you got your tithes and you got your offerings, let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for the men and women who faithfully give to this house and to your kingdom building work, Father Lord. And Lord, we're asking you, God, to bless the gift and the giver today as they bring forth their tithes and bring forth their offerings. God, multiply it for the use of your kingdom this morning, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask it right now by the power, by the authority, and by the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. I'm 
my side, you will never leave me by myself. So even when I'm weary, you are calling me to come and rest. Cause you cannot be stopped, you have already defeated him. Oh, you cannot be stopped, you have already defeated him. I'm dancing on the grave that once held me bound. I'm dancing on the chains that were laying on the ground. I'm dancing out the dark, I'm lighting up the night. Your joy becomes a weapon. I'm here to fight. I'm dancing on the grave that once held me bound. I'm dancing on the chains that were laying on the ground. I'm dancing out the dark, I'm lighting up the night. Your joy becomes a weapon. I'm here to Oh, 
Somebody bless the Lord in the house. Hallelujah. You love him this morning? Amen, amen, amen. He sure loves you. Amen. Reach down, pick up your Bible. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. Let's give all our guests and visitors a good warm welcome. If this is your first time with us, amen. We've got a real good track record. We ain't really ever hurt anybody too bad. Amen. <laughs> that I know of, we've not hurt anybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're a little bit radical sometimes, but we love the Lord, and we love you, and we're glad you're here, amen. And we just genuinely want to see people come to Christ and know the Lord as their Savior, amen. Remember tonight, uh, I think it's been moved back to 4 o'clock. We've got a special little service we're going to do it on the outside. I think around the campfire we're going to do, we missed out on the hay rides and some things that we did. We had over, we know for sure, over 1,200 people came through last night. That's 1,200 folk that know where we're at now, right? Amen. And I think it's a wonderful thing. And I've had all kind of crazy people say, oh, it's Halloween and you all, and we ain't celebrating the devil, amen. We're counteracting the devil for Christ, amen, and letting everybody know we care about them, amen, and give them a safe place to bring their babies to get some candy and, 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 and also letting them know we're here and we love you and we want to help you, amen. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 6. This will be my third uh, message um, out of this little series I've been doing. Amen. Uh, Seems like I'm forgetting something. Four o'clock today. Amen. Also, uh, coming up uh, real, real soon, I've got some folk wanting to be baptized. It's a wonderful thing that we have that we have that baptizing pool back there. <laughs> Amen. It works pretty good. We baptized 27 the first time we used it. Can you give God a good praise for that? Wow. Amen. That night, we was filling the water back up again, right? And then people was running to the store trying to get shop backs to back up all the water. And it was just a wonderful time. And the Lord, if you missed it, you missed it. I can't help it, amen. But that's why y'all not miss the service. You never know, amen. Even in, this, even in this text, amen. This text speaks to the urgency of why you should be in the house of God, amen. Because you never know when Jesus is really going to show up, amen. And I promise you, the very moment, the very service you miss, amen, my God, I mean, he'll show up and everybody will feel the nail prints in his hands and you'll miss it, amen. So if I was you, I wouldn't miss another service. Touch your neighbor and say, I wouldn't miss if I was you. 
Amen. <laughs> Amen. Because you never know, right? It's not contingent on how you feel about it. Amen. He just shows up. Uh, this little guy we're going to be talking about here in a few moments, he never expected anything. He was just going to go to church. You know, I think that's the worst thing you can do is just go to church, not expect anything. It's like, it's like going to the steakhouse and, and not just going to say, no, I think I'll just drink the water and sit here. I'm going. I go, baby. Look, I'm, I'm going to put two or three chefs to work when I go. Amen. They're going to be cooking something for me. Amen. I'm going to eat something when I go there. Amen. And it's the same for the house of the Lord. Do you know something? The spirit of expectation is the breeding ground for the miracle that you need in your life. If you come to church and you don't have any expectations, you don't make a draw on heaven, amen, then most likely you're not going to get anything anyway, right? But, but you know what? For, for those of us who know, amen, that he might just show up this morning, it might be tonight, it might be Wednesday night, and you know so I love him enough, I, will, I don't want to miss it. I, I mean, I don't want to miss it. If he's, you know, if, if, honestly, if you knew that he was coming today and he was going to show up in the flesh, I've heard preachers make statements like that and he didn't show up and I'm not making that statement. But if he showed up in the flesh and you knew he was going to be here, would you show up? Man, they'd be parking cars out here. Jesus is about to show up. You know something? Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus is about to show up in here this morning. Luke 6 and 6. When the Lord comes looking for you. And it came to pass also on another Sabbath, they entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and Pharisees watched whether he would heal on the Sabbath day that they might find an accusation against him. Amen. But he knew their thoughts. Isn't that wonderful? He knows, he knows mean people's thoughts, don't he? And he said to the man which had the withered hand, rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to, good, to, or to do good or to do evil? To save life or to destroy it? And looking around about upon them all, he said unto the man, stretch forth thine hand. And he did so. His hand was restored whole as the other. Let's pray. Father, today, God, I stand before a judgment-bound congregation of people. Lord, for we all must appear before you one day and give an account to the deeds that we've done in this flesh. And my prayer today, God, is that everything would be all right between us and you. God, that nobody would leave this place unprepared to meet you. That, God, we leave this place with a greater hunger, a greater desire to know more about you. And God, I'm asking you, Lord, I'm preaching on when you show up. And I'm asking you to show up today and touch in these altars and move and save and heal and deliver. And draw the backsliders home. And Lord, I pray, God, today that we'd all be ready. My prayer today, God, if you'll answer this prayer for me, oh God, that everybody under the sound of my voice and everybody that's listening to my Facebook and in the internet, that everybody that hears this message today would be ready or get ready. And we give you praise, honor, and glory. And everybody said... You might be seated in the presence of a living God that loves you today. Amen. Really good looking crowd here this morning. Amen. Uh, Jesus had a major problem in his day and it was, it was not with, uh, with the sinner folk. Amen. He, his problem that he had was more with the religious folk than, and you know, and, and uh, 30 years in, I found out that the, the problem that I had, amen, was not with the Lord at all, amen. Not even with the sinner people. They don't even try to, who, try to hide who they are. But my problem has always been with people who were religious, who, who really thought that they were lords over God's heritage, that really thought that, uh, that, that, that they had to say over what God was going to do and what he would. And I want you to understand, God's too big. You can't control God. You can't put him in a church of God box. He breaks out of that box. So you can't put him in a Baptist box, a Methodist. He won't fit. He's just too big. He's going to get out on you. There's just no way that you can tame. We, we don't serve. A, a lot of people want to serve a tame God. They want a God that they can control, one that they can come in and pay homage to and sing Kumbaya, my Lord, and give a little tip to the God that they serve, amen, and go home and forget about it till the next time that they feel obligated that they need to do something about their eternity. But I want you to understand with me tonight, we, or today, you ever notice preachers don't ever know if it's day or night? We just really don't know. We're just excited to be up here. 
But I want you to know with me that you can't tame this God. He's, he, he's untamable. You cannot deduce him down and boil him down to just what the church of God believes or just what Pentecostal holiness believe or just what anybody believes. I mean, he's so much bigger. He's so much more than we think about him being, amen. And, and uh, the problem that we have is, is so many people feel like that they have the market cornered. Can I just say this to you today, amen? about denominations, amen. I really don't think God had anything to do with that. I think that was more man than it was God, amen. Uh, and but, but I do want you to understand that we are a part of one and I'm not against the one we're in. I wanna go on record as saying that. But what I am trying to say to you today is this, amen, that you and I need to realize, amen, that he's bigger than what we even understand about him. Luke 6 and 6 said it, that it came to pass on another Sabbath. He, he's, he's already in trouble. He, he found out something about religious folk. They did not want him healing on the Sabbath. Read with me, if you will, amen, the New Testament and what he did after the fact that he made the religious people mad. He began, that's when he healed all the time after that. He said, oh, you don't like that? I'll show you I'm not liking this because he said, I'm gonna go outside of what you think God is and do something. Uh, it, it, it was almost like if you read with me, and I've said this before, if you read with me, amen, when, when Jesus, Jesus, when they were all standing around and they were talking about what they thought God was all about, Jesus said, you really don't even know anything about my father. He said, because my father will leave the, he told the three parables, remember? He told the three parables. He said, you don't know anything about my father. He said, my father will, he said, he'll put the 90 and 9 in a safe place and go after the one. He said, he will lie up the whole place to find that one coin. He is very interested. That's what Jesus said. He's very interested in that which is lost. He said, he'll also take the prodigal back and give him back his sonship, even though he lost his mind and went to a hog pen. So Jesus said to the religious, he had a lot to say to the religious people people, amen, and as he began to converse with them, he found out, amen, they didn't like people being healed on the Sabbath, it went against the rules, uh, I, I love to go to Israel, been twice, one of the things that I don't like about Israel, it reminds me of my childhood, when I, when I was a young man, about the time that the sun went down, they rolled up the sidewalks everywhere, couldn't go to a store, couldn't buy gas. Remember those days? Nobody was open on Sunday. Forget about it. You couldn't buy a pair of socks on Sunday. That was just, you couldn't do it. And when we were over there, when we were getting on elevators, they had a, they, they had a Shabbat elevator. And, and then on the elevator, when you get on the elevator, if you was on a hundred floors and you, and you're on a hundred and you're on top, it's going to stop. It's going to stop on every floor. All, nobody even pushes a button because it's a religious rule they can't work and then somehow or another pushing a button on an elevator is work to them they made up a lot of rules amen that God didn't have and you know what that's what denominational systems do they make up a lot of rules that God is not within a hundred miles of and Jesus amen he, he on another Sabbath he entered into the synagogue and taught and there was a man whose right hand was withered can I say this to you this morning that everybody come in here today and you put your best foot forward remember the saying remember Remember the same? And we walk in and we want to smile and we want to look presentable, amen? And we want people to look at us and say, you know, they got it going on. And I don't know anybody in this house that's not fighting somewhere in their life. There's a place that is withered in everybody, including the guy that's standing in front of you. There's a withered place in everybody's life. There's a place of lack. There's a place of need that's in everybody's life. We come in because, see, we were trained, amen? Thank God, amen, for a, back in, a, we had the coolest, cars and the coolest hairdos back in the 80s and one cool thing about the 80s we didn't have no disgrace book praise the Lord and see Facebook has taught a generation amen to be fake to walk in and act like it's all okay. And I understand, amen, that you gotta, you gotta fake it till you can make it, I get it. You gotta faith it till you, I got all that. But you know something, to walk in and act like it, you don't need no help and I don't need no help and we don't need no help. That's why we come to the house of God. This is a place, amen, this is a hospital, if you will, for the saints to come and be doctored and be fed and be nourished. And it's a hospital for the sin sick that they might get delivered and be born again. Somebody give him a little praise right there. 
And Jesus shows up. He just came all at once, just out of nowhere. Here he comes, amen. And, and he walks up into the synagogue and he comes and he knows, he knows, he knows without a shadow of a doubt who's gonna be there. He already knew you was gonna be here this morning. He knew you was coming. He knows the withered place in your life this morning. The place you won't tell your husband, you won't tell your wife, the place you'd never share with your pastor, you'd never share with the deacon board or the Sunday school teacher or even to your best friend you don't even wanna talk about, amen. But but he knows, he knew you'd be here. He knows the withered place. He knows where you're hurting. He saw your tears last night, if you will. He knows, amen, that you need him to touch that place in your life. That's why he showed up here today, amen. He came, this little man came, amen. And I, I you know, and I always preach this, he's looking for completeness, but you know some sometimes in a person's life, they come to church so long and they see everybody else get blessed, everybody else get healed, everybody else baptized in the Holy Ghost. They see everybody else get the miracle, the marriage fixed, the finances fixed, the children come home, amen. They see all those things to the point that they think, you know, thank God for them, but it's not for me. We get a mentality around the house of God. Well, I was over here, Jesus, and you walked right by me and healed the one on the other side of me. Or, 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 or I saw you, the person in front of me was truly blessed today and you're after year after year of coming you develop this mentality that says that God will move for everybody in the building but I don't think I used to preach he come for completeness I think he just come because he loved God I think he just came because amen that he wanted to be where that somebody was talking about the Lord that he could learn more see I want to commend some people that have come year after year and, and, and not got what they needed and the family did not get healed and, uh, and, and, and the finances didn't come. What happens when that happens? You just serve God anyway. You, I, can, I want you to, I've been prophesying this for a day or two now, but I'm telling you the prosperity preachers are about to go out of the business. They're gonna have to, they're gonna have to, amen. Uh, uh, they're gonna have to because, see, they're selling you. I, I was watching a guy, and I shared this in Sunday school. I was watching a guy and he was preaching, oh my God, I was going... I was, I was trying to find out where I could sign up for all these good things that God was gonna do. And it was money and it was cars and houses. And I, and, and I just, I just, everybody was hitting on our praise the Lord, hallelujah. I just topped in there. I said, hey, I said, the money will do you no good in eternity. I typed back in, I said, what about winning the lost in these last days? I, I mean, I hit him with three or four little things there. He never did answer me back. Can I tell you this? There's some that preach a gospel of prosperity and I'm not against you being blessed. I want you to be blessed. I'd be crazy not wanting you to be blessed. I'm asking God to bless you. I'm asking God to bless you that we can fund the furthering of the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen, from Jefferson City, Tennessee. But can I tell you, Jesus didn't come and die so you could be rich. He didn't show up this morning to pad your pockets with $100 bills. He came by this morning and his only concern is your well-being. He wants that withered place in your life to be healed. Somebody give God a good praise right there. I think he came maybe looking for some companionship. I think he, maybe he came looking, uh, uh, he, he came because he had a need and he knew, but he wasn't really expecting. And every time we walk through the door, somebody is hurting, somebody's sick. Somebody almost, see, I'm talking to somebody this morning that almost gave up. I, I, I'm talking to somebody who was ready to throw in the towel and the Holy Ghost came and touched them this morning and said, get up, get ready, go to church. I'm gonna touch you in a withered place. See, I, I want you to know, amen, that there's a lot of people that commit apostasy in the hard times. And can I say this about a hard time this morning. Listen, if you'll look at the magnitude of the trial and the fight that you're in and realize the enemy was not fighting you because of you, but it's because of the potential potential that you have to do damage to the kingdom of darkness. God, amen, should open our eyes that we should be able to embrace the fight. You are going to be in a fight, friend. Paul said at the end of his life, he said, I have fought a good fight. He said, I have kept the faith. And the enemy only fights people of potential. 
potential. And if you're being fought this morning and you have a withered place that you'd rather not talk about, I'm talking to you. If you come through the doors and you almost gave up and you almost throw it in the towel and you almost walked away, I'm talking to you today, amen. I come to tell somebody, this is not a time to get away from God. This is not a time to say, I can live as good at home as I can at church. No, you can't. Stop lying to yourself. You can't do it. Amen. People lie to themselves and they're going to go to hell for that. I ain't going to hell with you. Amen. I'm going to come to church. Amen. Every time we come in the house of God, somebody comes and they're withered and they're hurt by the things of the world. Amen. Amen. Luke, the physician, describes it and says it was his right hand. And, and right, hand, right hand represents fellowship. And fellowship was broken in this man's life because of the withered place in his life. Can, can I tell you this? That 99% of the people who don't go to church blame you and me. I get blamed more than you do, but I mean, <laughs> it's my fault. And, I, and, and a lot of times it's just grabbing for straws and reaching for reasons not to be here, amen. And you can get mad at me, but listen, we're too late in the game, man. We're too close to the coming of the Lord for me to stand up and pat you on the back and say everything's cool and everything's good and everything's all right. It's not a time to be lax. It's not a time, amen. It's not a time for, it's not a time not to be in fellowship. That's why the Bible said not forsaking the assemblies of yourselves together in the manner of such is, even the more as you see that day approaching. It's time. I, I, you know something? I don't know what's going to happen tonight, but I'm believing God's going to show up. I, I'm not looking for a reason not to come. I, I got my reason to come. 2,000 years ago, hanging on the cross of Calvary, he gave me all the reason in the world. I'm looking for him. But Luke, the physician, said his fellowship was broken. It was his right hand of fellowship. A lot of people have broken fellowship with the church, and I know why. I, I get it. I understand. We are so worldly-minded, amen, that we'll fight and fuss over colors of carpet and who sings when and whatever, amen? And we don't realize that ministry is not even in here anyway. You come to get filled up, to go out, to help somebody. Ministry's on the outside. I taught that this morning in Sunday school. If you missed Sunday school, you missed it. But Peter and John going up to the hour of prayer, they didn't get inside the synagogue. They were ministering on the outside. The ministry, the crippled people are out there. Come on, somebody. The lost most of the time are out there, amen? But watch this, this man, he had lost fellowship his right hand Galatians 5 and 7 said you did run well but who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth a lot of people that used to sing or teach or preach now they have broken fellowship amen they're withered in a place in their lives amen they're at a place in their life that they don't feel like God could ever use them again but I come to call you back amen into the army of God for we need you in our ranks today we need to let God heal the witheredness in your life that you can come to a place that you can help somebody else. Ministry has nothing to do with me. And them jokers that call me and want to come preach and they ask me how many I run, they don't ever get to preach here, amen. I won't let them come because it ain't ministry. It's about numbers and it's about how much an offer I can get, amen. I am so sick of that stuff that I could die. Can I tell you this, amen, having food and raiment therewith, be content, preachers, help me a little bit, amen. Look, I, I, I get it, amen, you want your pastor to be blessed wonderful thank God for it but can I tell you this I don't pastor here today for a paycheck matter of fact amen 18 years ago I made more then than I was making when they brought me in as the pastor amen I'm not here for a paycheck I'm not here for the income I'm here for the outcome today amen amen withered by implication of friction or the bowl or the heat some here this morning had a real relationship with God but because somebody looked at them funny, because of friction, because, because of uh, 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 unbroken fellowship, they burned out. Luke 6 and 7 describes the Pharisees watched him. I don't want to spend a lot of time here, but they watched whether he'd heal on the Sabbath. They didn't want, they, did, they cared not. And can I tell you this? Religion cares not about you. It does not, it cares about, it cares about position and pride and power, amen, and money. That's what it cares about. That's, that's what it's about. Do you understand when we, the first big fight, the first murder was committed over religion. It was about how you worship. That's how, that's, and it's still going on today. All these thousands of years later, it's still going on today, amen. The problem in the house, I mean, uh, of completeness, there's always those 
uh, that have it all figured out and have forgot that at one time they were with her too. Can I say this to you? Can I just say this? Amen, there's no place in the heart of a Christian for pride. I can't stand up here and say, bless God, I got more Holy Ghost than anybody's got. I'm bad, I can moonwalk in the spirit. I'm, I'm something else. No, can I just tell you this? The more of God that you get, the more humble you become in his presence and you realize how unworthy that you are to even be used of God. Who am I that God would allow me to pastor this great church? Who are you that God would allow you to lead worship, to teach Sunday school, to be on a deacon board? None of us are worthy. None of us, amen? But we've been made worthy. We cannot forget where we come from. It was me that was lost. It was me that was on my way to hell. And it was me that Christ showed up in my life and saved me. Help me somebody. Problem in the house of completeness is a lot of religious folk, they say, well, I never. I said, sweetheart, you just never got caught. You did. Nobody don't know it yet. If you be real nice and repent and hush your mouth, the Lord won't tell on you. Praise the Lord. Look at you never say, praise the Lord. Galatians 6 and 1. So, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, consider thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Sometimes we're more worried about our position and our place than we are those that are hurting around us in the house of God. The problem is religious people set themselves up in church and run off the people who Jesus really died to help and to save. Amen. That's the truth. Hey, I, w- I, was, I, was, uh, I was running a revival one time. I won't even say the name of the denomination, but it, is a, it, it's a, it, it, it wasn't a Baptist church, and I preach in a lot of Baptists and Methodists. I preach across the boards. But I was preaching in a well-known denominational system, and I walked in the door, and I knew a handful of people there, and I got there, and one of the old deacons came up to me when I got there, and this is the first words that come out of me. He didn't say, hey, Brother Ted, it's good to see you. Glad you come run revival. Looking forward to the word of God. Looking forward to the move of God. He didn't say that. You know what he said to me? He said, well, I'm just going to tell you right now, preacher, we had a meeting about you, and half the deacons didn't want you to come, and they decided, and I, I just come to tell you, they half of them don't like you because you ain't of our denomination, and they're boycotting the revival, and they don't want to come. I said, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. I said, let them stay home. And I said, let's have church. I said, I didn't come to be about a denomination. I didn't come to teach you the difference between what I believe and what you believe. I said, I come to get you in the presence of a living God that can change you. I said, I come to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. I said, I come to lift up the name of Jesus that all men would be drawn in to this denomination. Amen. Amen. He didn't know what to say. He went back and told them, but they were still mad they wouldn't come. And so, and you know what? They missed out. Amen. And, um, you know, the problem was, the problem for the people that was mad at Christ at this time is they realized that he was their friend. And, and he was smarter than them, and they knew he was. They let him teach. But, 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 what they couldn't understand is why God would bless him with all the knowledge that he had to teach. And he still liked people of ill repute. He, he come for them. I, he didn't come for them that are whole. They, they that are whole need not a physician. He said that. He didn't come for the righteous. He come for the unrighteous. Amen. They knew he was a sinner's friend. Amen. And you know something? Can I just tell you this? It's time. I, I'm, I'm tired. I, I'm really, really tired. I'm not, not of God, not of church, not of, I love everybody, but I'm so tired of the church. Amen. Not our church specifically, but the church of Jesus Christ. Man, not of Latter-day Saints, please. But the church of the Lord. I'm, I'm so tired that we reach so much inward and we never reach outward and we're never about the fun. There's so many people that's out there that's withered, that's hurting, that's looking for a word from God that needs somebody to... If Jesus is walking in this earth today, he's walking in you. If he has hands today, it's your hands. If he has a mouth today, it's your mouth to speak to those that are hurting and withered and dying and lost. Somebody ought to give God a good praise for that. Mark 16, 15, and just for a voice of clarity, I want to read it to you. Go ye into all the world, that's all I need. He didn't say, come ye. He said, go ye. You know what I'm telling you today? Go ye. 
When you leave this place, go somewhere and tell somebody of the hope that lies within you. Find somebody that is of not your social status, maybe not of your ethnicity, and tell them of the love of God. See, we like to congregate together, and we like when, when, when we got white churches and black churches and Hispanic churches, and we got Asian churches. And I got a friend of mine; he pastors. Uh, I don't even know where they're from. I don't even know where them people come from. And he's got one of them kind of churches too. And you know something? But you know something? Let me tell you something. The church ought to be the great melting pot that everybody and it is here I don't care where you come from and what ethnicity you come from it makes no difference to me I don't see nobody as as a color of skin but I see them as children of the most high God and I would to God that everybody would see it like the church is supposed to see it it ought to be red yellow black and white everybody precious in his sight we ought to look at it as if everybody comes through the door that needs you to help them do something and you willingly do it and fix the withered place in their life. Somebody ought to give him a little praise. Now, verse eight, watch this, and I'm taking too much time, I know. But, but I won't get to preach tonight, so, you know. And I'm the pastor and I might preach anyway, so you can't ever tell, right? <laughs> I might jump up in the middle of the fire pit and go to preaching. If, I, if what I got's hotter than the fire, I might do it, just, just to show you, Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm playing. Maybe I'm not. No. But uh, verse 8 said, but he knew their thoughts. Have you ever, have you ever considered that your thinking might have you separated from what God really wants you to do? Have you ever given this consideration that your thoughts might be separating you from the will of God? It was not God's will for this man to come to that church and be withered and nobody try to help him. But he knew. See, old timers used to preach it this way. You better not think no bad thoughts are going to hell. And I get it. But the Bible said he knew their, he knew that they didn't care. That blows my mind. He, I, I know I've told this story before, but I was sitting in a big meeting and they called it in Morristown and, and we went and I went and there's a bunch of us and preachers from everywhere, all denominations and we sat there and one, one preacher said to another preacher, and I said, we're the Church of God folk because, uh, you know, I'm, a, you know I'm, I'm Pentecostal and some of them's afraid I had a snake in my pocket and one didn't want me to sit with them, so I understand, you know. But I ain't got no snake and you better not bring one here, all right? We're having a petting zoo and no snakes allowed tonight. Praise the Lord, amen, amen. And, and I was sitting there one preacher walks up and he's pastor in a prominent church in Morristown and he looks at another pastor in the church of God is pastor in another prominent church in Morristown and he said, hey, I'm gonna bring all my people, put them in your church. And he said, we're gonna leave them right there. And he said, I don't care for people, I don't even like them anyway, just send me a check. And the other guy said, I'll send you a check, send me the people. And I, I couldn't hide it. I try, I'm usually pretty good about hiding my emotions, but I couldn't hide it. I couldn't help it. I got mad. I know you ain't never got mad, but I got mad. I mean, I, when I get mad enough to cry, please leave me alone, amen. I mean, just leave me alone and when I couldn't stop it tears jumped out my face and I jumped up and I just looked at him and turned around to walk off and the one who said bring them all to me he run me down he said what's wrong with you I said I tell you I said don't think there's much wrong with me but I said I think there's something wrong with you and that idiot over there he said what you mean he said he was just playing I said we don't play about people's souls I said we stand in the gap and preach the gospel and reach for everybody that'll come to the cause of Christ he said come sit back down boy he said we just playing. I said, I ain't sitting with you. I'm ashamed. I said, surely to God. I said, somebody's got to have a burden and somebody's got to have a passion and somebody's got to love people more than they love themselves. They didn't invite me back. I didn't care. Hey Amen. He knew their thoughts. And I know we ought not have bad thoughts, but there's a deeper meaning. He knew they didn't care. For the lost. He knows whether you love people or you don't. And you can hide it a little while, but you can't hide it forever. You can't hide it forever. Now, Jesus said, he knew their thoughts. And he says to the man with a withered hand, stand up. Charlie, stand up. Stand right there. Turn around and look at him. 
See? Maybe I should have got somebody else. He don't care to stand up. And, and, and what you're doing right now is you're saying, man, look at that hairline we're seeing. Maybe he should grow some of that off his chin on his head. So, I mean, but you know what? Now, Charlie don't care. That's the reason I got him. He's a, he's a good guy and he's a good supporter about things. And I, he might just have to stand out the rest of the message. I don't know. But, uh, but nobody wants to be stood up and shown your witheredness. We, we put on our best clothes. We drive our fancy cars. You know, can I make an announcement right now? I'd just like to make this announcement for a voice of clarity. That black car my wife drives is my car. It's mine. I drove it the other day. People said, wow, did Norman let you drive her car? I said, I bought that, so I, when I've got to go out of state and preach and stuff. I said, she drives it to keep the battery up. It's my car. We, we, uh, we drive our best and put on our best, and rightfully so. I'm not, but nobody wants to be stood up and show that part that's hurting. Nobody wants to be stood up and shamed because you don't have it all together. Nobody wants to stand up. Somebody say, they ain't got no money. Let's take up an offer and help them. Nobody wants to be. Shamed. Jesus said, you can sit down, brother. Jesus said, you can sit down. Hey, I don't think he wanted to. I think he wanted to stay up here. <laughs> but Jesus said, stand up in your witheredness. What he essentially said was this. He said, I want you to stand up. I already know. I had a friend of mine, I, I know I told a story years ago, but he, there was a block of wood fell off on a, on a cutoff saw. Tim's brother and my cousin used to run them things. And, that, and I'm, I'm telling you, they just tap that button, and I'm just cutting that wood. And uh, there's a guy we worked with, he cut, it, it cut his hand right here across this way, and all he had was just a little part of that thumb, all he had. And if you met him, I seen him other day at the store, and he used to run around with his hand in his pocket. You know why? Because he didn't want nobody to see his witheredness. Jesus said, stand up in the midst. He said, everybody's going to fix to see what's going on. Nobody wants to be put in that position. He said, rise up, stand in the midst. And the man stood up. Give me my next verse behind it. Verse 9. Verse 9, please. There it is. Then Jesus said, he didn't say anything to him to begin with. He said something to them. He said, I want to ask you something. He says, is it good to do good? Is it right to do good? Or do bad? He said, this man is in our midst. He's got a withered place. You ought to want to see him healed. They're not worried about his condition. They were fine with just leaving him like he came. They were absolutely fine with it. They didn't care if he was crippled. They just wanted the religious rules kept. Hey Amen. Luke 6 and 10. And then he says the unthinkable. He says stretch forth thy hand he said I want you to show everybody where you're withered at and he did so and the Bible said that his hand was restored as the other we try to hide our weeks they're going to come to the music I don't mean anything but they're going to come but we try to hide the weak the withered parts that we don't want nobody else to see Amen. We don't want anybody to see our bondage. So we, without, and I said a little bit about this in Sunday school, but let's see if I can say it right. I was praying about somebody. 
And uh, the Lord said to me, he said, they didn't reject you, T.H. He said, they rejected me. And they said, he said, they blamed you. He said, because they didn't want to turn loose of the things that had them bound. And can, can I just say this? Every one of us walked in this door with a withered place in our life. Every one of us walked in with a battle somewhere going on in our lives. And can I tell you this? You don't have to tell everybody. But today, if you answer the altar call, it's going to be a time that God heals withered places in your life. Stand with me all over the building. Stand. I cut that message real short because I felt the presence of the Lord coming in this house as I play something softly. Can I, can I talk to your heart just for a minute? There's so many of us that are crying ourselves to sleep and feel like they have nobody. It's a bad place to be when you feel like you ain't got nobody. Can I, can I say this? Can I just tell on me? If I tell on you, you get mad. I just tell on me. I think that personally that I've walked through a time in my life that God wouldn't let me call the people who always fish me out. He, I've walked through a season that I'd pick up the phone and the Holy Ghost say, don't do it. I lay it back down. Because I think he's trying to show me that he's my source. And when I feel all alone and you know, you know why a lot of preachers quit? You know, they're surrounded by people, but they're all by themselves. Do you know how many preachers I talk to every week of my life across denominational boards that I pray with on the phone because they ain't got nobody to talk to? And they cry. And now if the enemy's fighting the preacher like that, how in the world is he fighting you? And you think because that thing keeps reoccurring in your life and you just keep coming to church that there's no hope to ever be free, but today's the day you get free. Today's the day. Now is the accepted time. Today's the day of salvation. I'm not saying you're lost because you're struggling. I'm just saying that you can get deliverance today in this house. While heads is bowed and eyes is closed just for a second. Please, please reverence the Spirit of the Lord. Nobody running in and out just for a moment. I want to talk to the real people that's in a real struggle, that's in a real fight. There's a withered place there. There's a withered place. There's a withered place. Some of you ladies, come on. Some of you ladies. Prayer walkers are walking. Some of you ladies, come help our sissy pray right here. Little sister, I knew when I walked in the door and saw you, I didn't know you was coming, but I knew the Lord sent you a word today. I knew it. I knew it. He's going to heal that withered place in your life. Come here, ladies. While nobody's looking around, come on, girls. I know her with oil. She's got to have some help. God's going to fix them. He's going to right some wrongs right here in her heart. It may not change the circumstances, but it'll change her. He's going to fix his heart. Nobody's looking. Saints of God praying. Prayer walkers are walking. Where are you at? Bring that withered place to God today. He showed up just for you this morning. He came this morning to heal the brokenhearted. 
Give me my last scripture I, I sent you. Put it up on the board. If they're still up there, they may not be up there. Would you come? Look at the last scripture I put in this. It said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. If that's you this morning, I'm opening the altar for you. Come on, saints, pray. Come on, sir, would you come? Would you bring that addiction and lay it on this altar up here? Ma'am, would you come and bring that bitterness, that hurt, that came from a previous relationship? Would you come today? And would you let God fix that withered place in you today? Young person that's battling, this is a real problem. And I'm not even going to ignore it because the world has put so much emphasis on sexuality. Young person that's battling with your sexuality, come today and let God fix this for you. He already made you who he wants you to be. He'll affirm that for you today if you'll come. Would you come? If you're battling depression, it's a withered place in your life. Please come today while it's yet called today. Come on, some of you ladies come gather and help this lady right here pray. Surely it's not only the ladies. There's some men in here who need some help this morning. Come on, tough guys. Let's lay it aside and bring it to God today and say, God, I've got a weakness. Even Superman had kryptonite. Help me, somebody. God, I've got a weakness and I need some help. God, I've, I've succumbed. I've failed. I've, I've fallen to this thing too many times and I need help. Whether it be hate, whether it be bitterness, whether it be lust, whether it be porn, whether it be liquor, whether it be pills, whatever it is, bring it to God right now. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? I believe you are all I need. I believe that you're my portion. Come on, we're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Let God fix the withered places. He showed up. He come looking for you. He came because you was here. Would you come? Come on, don't disappoint him. Just come on. He'll help you. They're getting help. You can get help. Come on, hurry. I believe you are all I need. I believe you're my fortune. I believe you're more than. 
Let's give God some praise this morning. Let's thank Him for what He's doing here at Mount Vale. God is so awesome and worthy to be praised. Don't forget, tonight starts at 4 o'clock instead of 5. So please spread the word that it starts at 4 o'clock tonight. Don't, for, don't forget, go tell somebody. Come out and let's have a wonderful time. God is so awesome at what he's doing here in Mount Vale. Um, don't forget, Wednesday night we have service again at 7 o'clock. Go tell somebody, invite somebody. Let's stand and go before the Lord in prayer. And as we are praying, I would like for you guys to help me pray for Robbie's grandmother. She's not doing very well. I got a call in the middle of service. Uh, they've asked her to start moving her legs and her arms, and um, she's in a, a coma. They don't know why. They don't have everything's coming back good. But she's not, she won't move on response so that she's still unresponsive. So let's, let's continue to pray for her. And let's pray that God will bless us tonight as we come together tonight. Dear precious Heavenly Father, God, we thank you and we worship you, God, for what you're doing here at Mount Vale, God. We thank you, God, for what you have accomplished here today, God. We thank you, God, for our wonderful pastor bringing forth the word that you gave him, God. God, we pray, God, tonight, God, that you'll help us, that we'll come together and we'll have a great, wonderful time tonight, Father. And God, we pray, God, that you'll hold back the rain, God, so that we can come together tonight, God. And God, we ask you a special prayer for Robbie's grandmother God she's up there at Fort Sanders God we pray God that you'll touch her body God and God that your will be done God we ask you God for all these things in Jesus name we pray amen see you tonight at four o'clock